As the Red Jacket Firearms Jeep build is completed, we get to see what kind of power it has. Torque, horsepower, and let's not forget, firepower. in there buddy I usually do that with one hand on the wheel and one with the impact gun you could be lifting these big tires buddy <laughs> hey welcome to motorhead garage well folks want to bring you up to speed on what we did last week with our Rubicon man we did a lot on this thing didn't we Sam a lot of components but we're almost done got a few more things to do to really dress it up then we'll be able to drive it exactly and the guy that laid all this stuff out is Roy Ward here from Extreme Outfitters you did a fantastic job of laying this out now why would you do this and whose Jeep is it? Well, Will Hayden from Red Jacket yeah. uh, came to us and asked us to build an extreme Jeep. And Will's the host of Sons of Guns. Sons of Guns, right. He is. Yes, he is. And we've built some Jeeps before and we've seen where we need to change some things. So we're going to give him what he asked us to do. So you designed this thing so that it's things that he wanted, but also it'll take care of him too, right? We sure did. So what do we do here? Well, we added Rugged Ridge heavy duty bumper. Mm -hmm. Hood hold downs here. We've got the worn uh, new Xeon winch. Right. The TerraFlex lift with the heavy duty shocks. Rigid. Made sure that we got our lights. They build the brackets for it, so everything's bolt on, nice. We've got the truss from Artec. We contacted them. We wanted to beef up that suspension. Got to beef that, that up, right? Get that axle strong so we can get out there and have some fun. Okay. And when we go on around here, what else will we put in here? Well. He wanted comfort and he wanted rugged, so we changed up the interior a little bit, gave him a little change, plus kind of worked with what he does with Red Jacket. We did put some better tires on here. We got Mickey Thompson's. There again, you got rugged ridge on the rims and yeah. the rings. And you got the rear suspension back here as well. And you left the brake stock, didn't you? Yes, we did, because we're only running a 35-inch tire because he does drive it on the street a lot, too. So we wanted to give him the best of both worlds. Good. And of course, you got guards here on all the lights here, which brush you going through the forest or the swamp, brush will knock those things right out. Tell me about the back though. This is important because people have a lot of problems with that. They sure do. We have put a bigger tire and wheel on here, so we wanted to make sure we got with uh, TerraFlex. They did design the rear mount mm -hmm. on the tailgate to strengthen that so when you are on the off road, you're not breaking anything. Yeah, this thing will shake a lot back there. This is pretty solid. That's solid. All right, and then of course you have your jack back here. Same thing, rugged ridge on the uh, rear bumper and of course boiler exhaust system, gotta have that on there too. So you got a pretty well completed Jeep right here. I think Will's gonna enjoy this, but we got a few more things we have to do to get this thing finished up before we can take it out to the Ansara Jeep Jamboree. And folks, you wanna see that, that's gonna be incredible. I'm ready, we're gonna give him a show. All right, let's go ahead and we'll get this thing finished up so we can get out there. I'm ready. All right. All right, now I just spun this on with an impact gun. That's a small gun, not a lot of torque. We're gonna torque them properly because they are alloy wheels. Rugged Ridge wheels are really nice wheels. When you set a set of these big Mickey Thompsons, they are about, probably about 35 inch tires. When you put four of these on, you've had a workout. So you deserve a, a cold drink after this. I'm gonna torque these down. We'll be able to set the Jeep down, move it off the lift. And now we can continue with all our installations. All right, now one of the final things we gotta do is put on our front fender flares. These are from Rugged Ridge. Pretty neat piece here. You get two pieces here. You get the inner panel that goes inside and of course the outer one. Now the trick on this is you wanna take this inner panel, slide that in first, bring this right up like so, like that. Now, the easy thing to do is to take one of the little bolts here. These just really clip in, makes it a lot easier to not only install, but if you want to remove it later on, put the originals back on, you can do that. Now let me get this bolt started here. That'll hold this up. Now I want to keep it a little bit loose until I get everything up. Now you take your outer one, and all you do is you just slide this behind here like so. Put that in there. And that way it's easier to hold it. And then all you have to do is go ahead and then put your clips in like this. They go right between the two. You line up the holes and then you'll be in business here. Like so. This one down in here. 
pretty easy. Gives you a lot of extra clearance in here, and of course, if you ever want to remove them, you just pop them right off. Not a big problem. See how Sam's coming with his. All right, if you got this flare on, a couple more little plugs, there's nothing to it. Now I'm gonna put the rear door on. Again, these are pretty simple. Even Dave could do this. You just line these up, because he's probably better at it than me. Drop those in. There you go, you got a nice rugged door, got an inside release. That'll help keep the passengers in and the riffraff out. Here I am. <laughs> okay, now one of the last things we've got here, Roy, is your gun rack. That mounts right here in these holes, doesn't it? Yeah, same just place put a the little door is. Pressure on it, it'll work it on down there. Now, this isn't the only gun rack you make, is it? No, sir, we don't. We actually make a pistol mount here in the front, and then, of course, in the, behind the front back seats, we have your rifle rack here in the back also, and then we have your rack in the back behind the back seat. All these racks, there's no drilling. Everything is designed to work with all your factory mm -hmm. holes, but we did design this thing, put it in the back, but same thing with Will Hayden, Red Jacket. He wants I it red, right? I think we're going to make it red. We're going to change that out. Yeah. Anyway, in the meantime, we're going to take a short break. We're going to run this through, get a couple of decals on it, and we're headed out to the Ansara Jeep Jamboree. Stick around. You're not going to want to miss it. On this week's industry update, we're featuring lights from Rigid. And I'll tell you what, these Rigid industry lights are fantastic. They are durable, they are waterproof, and they're all LED. They're the rage with all the off-roaders. These things are so strong. Rigid Industry puts them on. They got all these brackets. There's these Jeeps. They're custom made for it. And I'll tell you, when you switch them on, they're bright. Here we go, Davey. There's one, there's two, there's three. It's like daylight when you turn these things on at It'll night. It'll light I'll up the night. But the nice thing about it is when you get them, they come with brackets as well. Like for this Jeep, it's got a bracket that bolts right here to the side. All you have to do is take out the original bolts Put this in, bolt it right back in place. Got brackets right here. Of course, it comes with brackets. You can mount a light right up here on the hood as well. And of course, you got them here. You got your big one back here. Any place you can hang a light, Rigid has it for you. Even backup lights. You know, when you're in the woods at night and you're off-roading, you need all the light you can get. Rigid Industries will give it to you. Exactly. And if you got a trailer and it doesn't have good backup lights on it, this is the way to go. If you want more information about Rigid Industries lights, all you have to do is go to their website. This edition of Motorhead Garage, presented by Low Car Performance Products, is being brought to you by ARP, the world leader in fastener technology. B&M Racing and Performance, quality performance products that work. Original Parts Group, the world's largest source for GM A-body parts and accessories. And by Extreme Parts World, the RV and Extreme Parts Superstore. Hey, welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, folks, Sam and I, we got the Jeep all finished out now, all yep. detailed. And we've come down here to Lone Hollow Ranch here in Vanderpool, Texas. This is a really upscale ranch. If you want to hunt for that trophy buck, this is the place you can get it. Boy, it sure is. But the reason we're here now is we're going to present the Jeep to Will Hayden. So let's get our Jeep, Sam. OK. Oh. Will? They extreme this Rubicon for you, man. You know, I got to drive the baseline Jeep around, okay? And I saw all the parts laid out on the floor. But seeing it all together, I don't know. It looked like he might have shoved in an extra 747 into that Jeep frame. I mean, it was just incredible. <laughs> what you notice is that the industry, uh, despite the men, independent companies, are working together to produce components that when put together, they all seem to work as in designed you know, in unison with each other and perform as intended. It's great to see what you consider to be your competitors coming together and putting together a vehicle for a customer and, and then having a final product that's perfect. Has it got power? It's got a ton of power. Let's check it out. Has it got traction? Tons. I really didn't want to get out of the thing. It was smooth, but at the same time able to roll over dang near anything you put in its path. Well, I guess the first challenge for Will is to drive his Jeep right down into this lake and then head right up over here through a ravine, do a little bit of rock crawling. And remember, you're right, he is a gun maker. He is not an experienced off-roader. We're going to find out just how well he does. It's Will Hayden. Let's take that in. Well, Will drove into the lake, but he got in a little bit deeper water than he expected. Uh, there was a spot. 
where people had been driving through over closer to the bank. And I just hated the idea of following everybody else's trail. So I'm just driving through there and Rodney's just pissing and moaning about it's gonna get too deep. Lock it. Not locked up. And I guess we just stopped for a second to discuss it. <laughs> We're sitting there goofing, and then all of a sudden he's got a whole other side of issues, which is the lake coming in over his socks. When Will stopped in the water, he uh, didn't have the lock engaged. But it started digging and digging, and what I was afraid of was gonna pull water and ingest it in through the intake, and hydraulic the motor, and I thought, he's done. Once he put the lock engaged, the most capable Jeep out of the factory was able to pull itself right out of the water. Yeah, time to go ahead and leave, but it was pretty neat, man. I mean, what kind of vehicle does that? Somebody order a Jeep. You know, in the rock crawling, the biggest issues that these axles are facing is deflection when you get larger tires and you start doing extreme articulation and whatnot. You start twisting and bending and fatiguing, and that's what this armor kit is designed to do, is to, to minimize and prevent any kind of deflection or any bending that may occur. I don't know if you know it, but we don't have many Rocky Mountain boulders in South Louisiana, so this is all new to me. Going through the mud, through the pond, okay, that could have been my backyard. But when we started going over those boulders, the little ravines, and that was just a whole nother world for me. And feeling the power, man, that Jeep's got power, oh my God. The biggest problem I was having was giving it too much gas. You know, honestly, most of that is just idling over, all right? The biggest issue I was having was I'm used to having to gas up a little bit to go over these obstacles. And with this Jeep, no, 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 no. It's just walking right over everything. It was unbelievable. Until we got to that one wall. And Rodney said, now, oh no, just, just back up about, back up a little bit for a running start. What do you back up, a foot? He had a foot of running start to go up this thing that's straight up. We're halfway up it and the bottom just starts going off to the side. Back it up, get a little bump at it. And he lives out here, so he knows this. So he's got expert advice on tap. And you know what the expert advice was? Yeah, don't let it roll over. <sighs> Thank you. <laughs> Well, you can see how well he did in the lake. Man, I thought he buried it. Man, he was playing submarine with that thing. He's lucky he didn't inhale any water, but he got it out. Well, he got up through the rock area too. So anyway, the next step is some jumps. We're gonna take a short break, come back. We'll see how he does there. This week on the Steel Rubber Product Spotlight, we have found something truly unique. It's a 1931 Ford sedan, but it's not like any other that I've seen. What do you call this? Well, Eric, I believe it is really a 1950s traditional built car with a little bit of a flair of an early 60s show car. The car's been chopped seven inches, it's section two, and it has also been channeled with a stock floor. And it's got a small block Chevy to keep it moving? Yeah, it's got a 350 with a turbo 350 automatic transmission. What is a guy like you, a young guy like you, doing an old 1950 show car? I grew up around street rods with my dad and started in the garage when I was three, and it just kind of stuck and turned into a profession. And you've put some pretty cool tricks inside the car, haven't you? Yes, um, I tried to make it as accommodating for a driver as possible, and it has a hand-built dash with a 1952 Nash insert. Well, Kurt said this car was easy to get into. I'm about to find out. This may actually take a while. So while I'm doing this, we'll see you next week. Welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well, Sam, looks like Will Hayden survived his first challenge. Now he's got another one. 
Well, this isn't much of a jump, but let's see how he does on the jump and see how he takes that Jeep and takes good care of it. Hope he survives. All right. So I got my wife, got my assistant, got his kid in there, and my wife, Rachel, says, well, how do you do this? Well, apparently you just point towards the ramp and give it all the gas you got. Okay, then. We put a lot of parts on Jeeps. We try and test a lot of parts, and that's what we did coming out here is to, to actually go out and look at the performance of shocks and springs and aftermarket parts and see how they hold up and do the extreme. I mean, go through the paces with it. You know, you're coming down, you're landing on this, all of that force is being shoved up through the tires and transferred through that axle housing to the springs. And let me tell you, you know, you put a stock axle through that and uh, you're really asking for trouble. It's hard to know where to start when you're talking about it. Everything from the, the upholstery, the, every little detail, the rims, the, the suspension, all the hard points, everything. Attention to detail that's just incredible. The vehicles that we've done with him as far as Jeeps go, uh, he will go out and do our job sometimes. He'll try and test it, and that's what we wanted to do with that. Well, we wondered how Ansira got involved in this project. We had done some builds with Ansira. They have seen our work. They know that we work hard. We really go for the uh, extreme as far as detail. We just thought it'd be a great opportunity for us to get more involved with them. Roy gave us a phone call, said, hey, I've got an important build that we need done, and I need you to build this Jeep 10th anniversary Rubicon for Will Hayden. And we're gonna uplift it and do some fabrication to it and modify it. Well, it looks like Will survived his first jump and then some too, Sam. He did pretty good. Not a bad jump and that Jeep just hopped over it. Yeah, and he got a lot of other guys involved with him. Everybody just started spinning, doing donuts, going up on the hill. These guys are having a great time. Yeah, but you know what Will's known for, though? Everybody knows he's the firearm king. Well, we're going to see some of that when we come back, so you want to stay tuned for more here at the Ansara Jeep Jamboree. Hey, on this week's industry update, we're featuring gun holders here from Extreme Outfitters. And this is a nice one. This is made for their Jeep. It fits right in where the door used to go. It's fully adjustable for your different length of rifles. And you can either put it in barrel first down here, or you can put it in butt first right down here. It's got a nice rubber mount right here, so you can put your weapon in there, lock it up, and there it's nice, safe, and secure, ready for you when you see that buck running across the field. That's right. We've got them on both sides of this Jeep. One bolt after you drop them in the hinge, it secures them. We also have a nice personal weapon holster right here that bolts into the seat. By the way, all of this is made by Extreme, and they have no drilling that bolts into the original Jeep holes. Right here, got a rack for the back seat hunters, and you can put your rifles in here. And again, very rugged. You got, it's all rubber protected, so it takes good care of your weapons. And right here in the back, again, they have a weapon rack that you can bolt in here. Very easy, you can put different ones, different rifles in here, all ready for when you want to go hunting. If you want a lot more information about this, all you have to do is check their website and you'll get all the information you need. This edition of Motorhead Garage, presented by Low Car Performance Products, is being brought to you by Prevost, your best source for compressed air distribution products. Silverleaf Electronics, knowledge is horsepower. Borla, the world's most winning exhaust. And by Hearst, America's number one shifter. Hey, welcome back to Motorhead Garage. Well. You know, when you come to a Jeep Jamboree like this, there's a lot of different things these people like to do. And with Will, that's shooting in it. Absolutely, and what else would you shoot at? But a Jeep, of course. That's right. Yeah, some good usable parts in this, but this thing's had uh, seen better days for sure. It has, so it makes a good target, especially if you've got a lot of different types of firearms and you like to shoot. This is a fun thing to do. These were just uh, stock ARs that uh, they had laying around, just boys in the neighborhood. Their own personal guns they let us borrow. Nicely dressed up and very well sighted in, I might add. Who's our next contestant on the M16 is right? Come on, guys, let's pay kill a Jeep. I couldn't believe when Sam picked up the other guns and started shooting. You know, I just had to get my hands on that AR. 
put a 30 round clip in it and fire it and uh, I said well I need to shoot one of these and he goes you ever shot one before and I said yeah all right cowboys I know that not one of my bullets missed that car. And I really had a blast doing that. Well, why wouldn't it? Where, where are you gonna get to do that at? Most folks ain't gonna let you blow a Jeep to hell in their backyard. Batter up, man. That's just good fun. Well, Will came up with a way for a perfect ending on this piece. take something out, demo it. But we're not usually demoing the vehicle that takes the weapon out there. It's kind of the reverse. We got a vehicle to take what we're demoing, and the whole purpose of it is to cause massive rains of destruction. Well, I told Roy if he uh, let me really wind up on that Jeep a little bit, I'd end his day in style, red jacket style, if you would. <laughs> thing blew up. It was an amazing thing. It was the loudest boom I've ever heard in person. It's something you don't see every day. You know, it's kind of hard to see a Jeep go up like that, but uh, that was cool. Well, Sam, I don't know about you, but that was one heck of an experience, wasn't it? Man, we've had a blast out here. These guys were great, and I'll tell you, these Jeeps are a lot of fun. Oh, they sure are, and we got some special people we want to thank. Roy Ward, for all the work that he's done, and Will Hayden for coming along and showing us what it's like to shoot rifles. Absolutely. Absolutely. Remember, extreme, if you can dream it, they can extreme it. They sure can. Well, once again, we've run out of time. We'll see you again next time here at Motorhead Garage. So long. All right, buddy, let's, uh, let's get the water truck. Good idea. Yeah.